Hey, what's going on everyone? Vega here for Serpent X Tech, and in this video I'm going to talk to you about soldering. And this subject comes about as the A2000, the RTX A2000 from NVIDIA has gained traction um, as a topic because those GPUs in the mining world can get you up to 50 mega hash if you do what's called a shunt resistor mod. Now shunt resistor mod or shunt modding is not new to the computer industry, uh, but it is more or less new to the mining industry. Maybe not all miners, but most miners out there. So I wanted to go over a few tips with you. First, before you go modding your GPU that you just spent five, six, seven hundred dollars on, practice on an old GPU. This is actually a GTX uh, 760. Yeah, and 760 MSI Twin Froser 760 is actually already broken, so perfect example. Uh, but practice on an old GPU, and if you don't have an old GPU like this that has shunt resistors on it, here's one for the PCIe slot. Here's one for the eight pin and six pin that I already modded. You know, try uh, the the Bauer ruler or the ruler which has, it comes with a bunch of little SMDs and components in which you or your family, your son, your daughter, whoever can actually practice soldering on first. So that way you can get that practice and that skill before trying to attempt it on your A2000. Tip number two is PCBs, not only for GPUs, but motherboards in general, are getting thicker and thicker or have a number of layers. And oftentimes that could be a problem because when you go to solder to a component, the PCB actually absorbs the heat making it harder for you to actually uh, you know, connect that component. And tip number three is flux. Now two and three are gonna go hand in hand. Uh, Chump Change did a great video live stream where they showed uh, you know, trying to mod the A2000. They did it successfully and it actually did work. They did make it work, but they didn't use flux. And another thing that I noticed during the video was during uh, that live stream when they were trying to solder to the resistor, the solder was actually sticking to the tip of the soldering iron versus the resistor. So they didn't use flux, and additionally, what that means is heat, which goes back to tip number two. Because this PCB is absorbing the heat, there's a number of ways you can try to get this PCB up to temp. First is, get a heating plate, you put the PCB on, you heat it up to a certain temperature, and then that will help that solder stick to the component. Additionally, if you don't have a heating plate, a heat gun will work. You heat up the component, whatever you want. Keep an eye on it. You can get some cheap little, uh, you know, tool like this to measure the, the PCB temperature, especially if you're in a cold environment. Get that up to temp, and that will help your solder stick to the actual component. Additionally, with flux, you know, this will help you dramatically. And this is actually something that Buildzoid and I talked about. Uh, chip quick or I'll have it down below that you can get really good stuff so because you got to heat up not only the shunt resistor itself but the solder and then the new resistor that you're trying to add to you got to heat up those three things they all got to be up to temp uh, that will make your life easier because if you don't do that and you don't use flux what will happen is, is you will have a cold joint or a cold solder cold weld whatever you want to call it which means that the resistor's on there and like it won't come off, it's good, but it's not making a solid connection because you really need to get down into the traces. You see where those two white boxes are? You need to get all the way down into there. You need to make a solid connection uh, and that is where uh, the correct heat with flux can help you out. Additionally, a lot of people have just basic soldering irons like the plug-in ones where you can't manage the temperatures or anything like that. You can figure out what the temperatures are by the wattage, uh, but I like to have something where I have a little bit more control. And with these modern day PCBs, I get a digital readout and you wanna be around 450 to 550 uh, if you're gonna do the shunt resistor mod. And again, depending on your environment, it might be 600 or whatever, but if you heat up the PCB to around 100, 120, and then your soldering iron's around 450, 500, then you should be able to uh, add the shunt resistor with no problem, with a little bit of flux and a good soldering iron. Just note, that you want to be generous with the flux. For example, on the A2000, similar to this card, there's a lot of components around this resistor. And I've seen people accidentally weld or solder a capacitor to their resistor, thereby uh, breaking their card. And then you have to replace multiple components around the shunt resistor, including the resistor itself. So just be careful, generous, but not too much. Because once it heats up, it's gonna pull around. And when it does that, it can sometimes cause this brown staining, which a lot of people don't like. 
If you get a rubbing alcohol and maybe like not, not only a, a soft bristle brush, but maybe something like this, you can actually pour a little bit of alcohol, scrub that off. You'll see your clean joints on your solder as well as all that brown stuff on the PCB go away. And then four, it's a good skill to have, right? So a lot of everything that I learned was not only from Kingpin, the hacker, but Kingpin, the enthusiast overclocker for EVGA, uh, High Cookie, the Bauer, um, actually hardcore overclocking Buildzoid, right? So I learned, I studied, I researched, I watched what they do. There's a number of other guys out there. Actually, Miner On Demand did a really good job on a video showing people how to actually solder uh, or do a shunt mod uh, on their A2000, which I'll have linked down below for you. Uh, but I just, I looked, I studied, I practiced on other GPUs, not just this one, because again, I've been doing this for a bit. I just haven't practiced in a while. Um, it's, it's good tool to have because say for example, Kingpin used a, uh, a hardware hack, right? They had to do a little bit of soldering to fix a treasure uh, that the person forgot the password to and they were able to obtain the funds, right? People use soldering irons or solder to make wiring looms or uh, you know, car uh, wiring harnesses. Uh, they also use it for radio. So it's a, it's a good tool to have in your tool belt to where if you know how to solder, you can fix multiple things, not just GPUs. So I just wanted to share those tips with you in today's video. Um, if you got any helpful advice out of it, uh, please give it a like. If there's any additional information that maybe there's a tool or a tip that somebody else can mention, leave it down in the comments below. We appreciate it. And you know, the biggest thing is challenge yourself. J and K Ventures does have an opportunity to help you out and uh, mod your A2000s for you, but try it and see if it's something that you get the hang of and, and save yourself some money and actually enjoy it. Uh, but do me a favor, on the way out, hit the like button, make sure to get subscribed, hit the notification bell to stay up to date, as well as check out various links in the description, not only to some of the components that I featured, but also to some of the parts. Um, and make sure to stay up to date with me and what's going on by uh, keeping an eye on the Twitter page. Besides that, you have yourself a wonderful day. I'll catch you next one. Take care.